All right, let's go. Michael J. Huddleston, a.k.a. ICT, calling himself the Inner Circle Trader, is a well-known con artist and fraud in the trading industry. There are very few trading scams who tell more lies than ICT. There is a well-known saying in the trading industry, how do you know when ICT is lying? When his lips are moving. Never trust anything coming from ICT. You have been warned. In this series, we will be showcasing the history of this conman and revealing the fraudulent statements and outlandish lies and absurdities uttered by this fraud over the years in the trading industry. Know your history or you are doomed to repeat it. Get Rex Studios proudly presents fraudulent and stupid things ICT says. Enjoy. Alrighty then, we are back. This is part two of our fraudulent and stupid things ICT says. So today I've got a podcast that he did. Of course, I don't know. I call it a podcast, but it's basically when ICT goes out and drives in his car on Saturdays, which is apparently his thing, and he parks someplace and just starts ranting on and people listen to him. And, uh, you know, he just... Uh, Talk about the only times when he starts to reveal truth, uh, the, at least how he thinks, but uh, really stupid and terrible advice that he gives. Uh, today we're going to talk about that one, and I'm going to go right into it. I've got notes over here as I had to listen to this whole thing. I am not going to let you guys sit through the whole thing, though, but I am going to give you the snippets that uh, I did pre-record while it was going. So I'm gonna skip to the pieces. I'm gonna talk to you about them. Again, what we're trying to do here is just give you the pieces of information for you to make your decision. If you're gonna go and waste your time on ICT, you at least need to know who you're dealing with. And a lot of people come into the industry unaware that this guy is such a fraud and a con man. So we're giving you the history of ICT so that you'll at least know and let's go. Here we go. All right, so the first thing from this podcast I've got in my notes, and I think I started recording after this section came up, but he had talked about compounding interest. Uh, this is a scenario where, again, ICT is not the smartest guy, is not the brightest crayon in the box. He didn't go to college. He tells people that college is a scam. He doesn't send his kids or anything to college. I don't know of any... Um, rich person who doesn't want to send their kids to college or at least some form of educational like tech school or something like this. He would rather his kids work at McDonald's, clean floors or Chipotle. Um, and that's just how things go. But he apparently doesn't know how compound interest works. He's literally saying in the very beginning of this video on his talking about his ends series, meeting the ends, a whole like uh, making ends meet is his play on words with this ends series. He is telling people that compounding interest is how you really make money, but he's talking about like basically making money in your account, but in trading accounts, there's no compounding interest. So he's uh, talking to his students and acting like giving them information. That, oh, you know, you're the compound interest, let, let it compound. There's no letting a trading compound, like you don't let a trading account compound. So anybody who thought when ICT said, oh, you know, let the account compound for itself, like that doesn't happen. So first thing off the bat, bad advice from ICT. No, you need to know that trading accounts do not compound. That's not how things work. It's not compounding interest in a trading account where you are trading intraday. So big faux pas there at uh, minute 20. Going forward to 35, again, that's benign in this. He's talking about um, his son's vehicles and again, ICT has claimed that he's worth $750 million. Again, we found him living in a dump in Maryland and his kids live in trailer parks. These are facts. But today on this one, he's talking about one of his other sons who he claims that he buys them cars. But you tell me, is it really buying a car when you make your son pay for it? Why would you tell everyone that you're buying your son his first car and then turn around and say, well, <laughs> more like daddy picked out what car you're going to have, but you get to pay for it with your money, $900 a month. Uh, I don't know, let's listen in and you guys tell me, but again, ICT acting like, oh, he's so generous, he pays for his kids' cars, and then you come to find out, no, he's not paying for his kids' cars. Not that we care, again, we really don't care, but this is a guy who claims he's worth $750 million and yet his kids are living in trailer parks and he's got one of his kids doing hospice care for their grandfather, which is kind of sick and disgusting to begin with. Um, but he would rather them do that than to go and get an education and have their own life. So let's get in on this section. It really was very disturbing uh, to me. Let's hear it out. Now, your goal should be to work toward being rich. Rich is not wealthy. Wealthy is where the money's making money for you. Rich is where you don't need to work to make it. Now I am playing this at 1.5x speed, so this is he's speaking a lot slower than this, so hopefully it's a uh, good pace. Here we go. Your bills. There's a difference there. So what I have thought about, and I'm using my son Caleb as a guinea pig, 
So his son Caleb is kind of the middle son who lives in a kind of a dump in Dundalk, Maryland with his uh, father-in-law, ICT's father-in-law, who is an elderly man, has uh, really major problems, and he's got his son doing hospice care for him, and he can't afford to do a getting him into a nursing home facility or anything like that. He literally has his son cleaning up their shit, and again, if you've dealt with elderly parents, I know I have in the past with my... Uh, my elderly grandparents and things, but literally think about this. If your dad forced you to take care of your grandfather, that was part of what you had to do. Daddy won't, you know, daddy apparently has all this money, but yet he's not going to get him uh, actual hospital care, nursing care, or anything like that. No, no. You, as a 22, 23 year old son, are going to spend your life taking care of your grandfather rather than, you know, I don't know. So this is the Caleb that he's talking about. Again, he forces Caleb to do everything. Poor Caleb, uh, you know, is turned into, um, you know, I've listened to him before and he's just, um, this sounds like he's beaten down. Like dad just makes him do everything. So this is context. This is the Caleb that we're talking about. And yet now he's trying to make examples of him. So here we go. Let's hear how he's going to make Caleb give up his car. <laughs> to give to his other son who he doesn't want to buy a car for but claims he's going to buy a car for i mean you can't really you got to follow this little story here uh hopefully it hasn't made it more confusing i tried to unconfuse it let's listen but follow the story it gets crazy here we go things are very, very expensive right now and my oldest son that lives with me he's about to get his driver's license and he wants a camaro now no <laughs> no sound mind sober-minded parent would buy their teenage boy a Camaro as their first car. I know that. I wanted to do that. But my wife said, you know, that's not right. So I told him, I said, well, I will tell Caleb to give you his car. Pause. All right, full stop. So you got other son who lives with them. Uh, again, I don't know the names of the minor children. I don't pay attention to that. But he's got a son in high school of driving age. He claims that he thinks that dads need to give their sons their first car. Okay. Well, so he's talking about this son, but he said, so I'm going to make Caleb give him his car. Now, I'll do another video on this because I don't have it cured up here this evening on the vehicle he has. I don't know, it's like a Toyota Control Corolla gray, um, kind of a, you know, it's <laughs> nothing fancy. Okay, but he's going to make Caleb, follow the story here, get, make Caleb give up his Corolla to his high school son. Okay, so now Caleb is without a vehicle, right? So follow this part. Okay, so here we go. Are we gonna have Caleb give him again? Not he's not gonna get a Camaro. No, I mean we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna give him the Corolla from Caleb. Here we go. Which I offer him too. Now before you get in there and start saying, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. I think every dad should give their boy their first car. Doesn't it? All right. So he says that the dad should give their boy their first car. Well. It's weird. This is what I mean by ICT just thinks he can just say stuff. And like, again, his ICT students are so dumb. He knows his students are so mindless that they're not going to really follow on this story, which is why I got to pause this, slow it down for you guys. So this, I'm not slowing this down for my guys. I'm slowing this down for the ICT kids who are going to watch this video later. You guys are dumb. So let me, let me slow it down for you. You following this? So Caleb's going to give up his car to his son now he so daddy's supposed to give him his car. oh so providing a car <laughs> i'm gonna take it from someone else <laughs> give it to well that's daddy giving his son a first car right you following that logic man you gotta be stupid all right here we go to be the best car but i needed that help when i was younger and i got it so i'm doing it for them but they're uh their taste in cars obviously are much more expensive now without needing to be high-end cars so Case in point, I told Caleb, I said, look, part of your development is you're going to give up the car that I got you. Part of your development. This is a 23-year-old son. Mind you, this son is like so beaten down, quiet, spirited, individual, like, uh, 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 you know, I'm going to make daddy happy, whatever, and daddy's so controlling. Uh, uh, uh. So part of his development is give up your car to your younger brother. Um, okay, okay dude. You're not going to send me to college. You're not going to send me to a tech or trade school, but uh, you're going to have me give up my car to my brother because oh, I, need, I need that development. <laughs> so no, you're going to do without a car, okay, son? Uh, all right. Uh, here we go. Let, let, listen to the rest. It gets crazy. It's even better. And you're going to give that car as a starter car to your brother. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're going to give your car to your brother as a starter car. 
Uh, remember that deal where you said that dads should give their sons their first... No, no, no. Apparently, you're not a dad, Caleb. Caleb is not a dad, but giving his brother who... You follow that. You follow it? He's, he's forcing Caleb to give up his first car to his younger brother for his own good, right? Oh, okay. Wow. Let's go. Let's play some more. Oh, this is Mr. Rich ICT, right? No, no, no. Dude, this guy is a penny-pinching, money-hungry, poor-ass, dumb motherfucker is what ICT is. And what he's doing to his kids is terrible. Let's play. And I'm going to give you a new Toyota Tacoma. Now, mind you, he said, I'm going to give you a Toyota Tacoma. So what does that imply to you? So a normal person, oh, wow, he's going to go buy him a Toyota you know, Tacoma and he's going to deliver it to him, main, meaning paid for, right? You think right now what he just said, okay, ICT kids are, oh, well, see, he's going to buy him a, he's going to buy him a Tacoma. Literally buy it for him. Now, mind you, did he ask Caleb what kind of car he wanted? Hell no, because daddy is a control freak motherfucker. He didn't ask him, hey, what do you want a Camaro? Do you want some, do you, would you like some other kind of vehicle? Do you want a truck? No, you're getting the trucks, right? This is ICT style bullshit, right? You're gonna tell you what's up, you're gonna get this. Okay, so shoving a vehicle at your son. Now he, now at the same time, he's like, oh, he bought it for him, right? But no, 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 pay attention to the payment plans that he's gonna have to deal with while he, quote, gives his son a new vehicle and then he has to pay for it. <laughs> Folks, if you're going to give somebody a gift and then you're going to be like, all right, so uh, that'll be uh, X uh, here. I don't know. I give you give this car. Now, there you go. Now, give me uh, now you're going to need to be paying me $50,000 for that car. But uh, hey, I got it for you for Christmas. Uh, yeah, that's roll. A truck. So that was the plan a week ago, a week and a half ago, I think it was. And I bought it the same day I bought my own truck. I bought it the same day I bought my truck. OK, following that. Uh, so he bought it. Hmm. Okay, let's listen to that payment plan, how that works out. So, I told him, I said, this is the truck I think you should have, it's a decent one, six-cylinder. This is the truck I think you should have, a six-cylinder, you know, I'm gonna save some gas, can't get that eight-cylinder, bro, you gotta, you know, we, gas is really expensive right now, okay, listen, we can't, I'm gonna, you're not gonna have very much money for gas, because I mean, I gotta get that YouTube money, you know what I'm saying, because I, I can't sell mentorship anymore, and I fucking sure can't trade, so fuck. Uh, you know, let's, let's, keep it, let's keep it cheap. Let's get the six cylinder, okay? Six cylinder, get the Tacoma, okay? It's a lightweight truck, we gotta get that, okay? Let's go. It's a Toyota, you can put a million miles on this thing, it'll drive forever, okay? He liked it, so I went and bought it. Now, Toyota Tacoma. Okay, then he switches it up. He liked it, so then I went out and bought it. Okay, well, I don't know what the story is here. I'm not gonna try to fish it out, but sounded like daddy thought he should have the truck. I don't know, all of a sudden he's like, okay, like, listen. Caleb is going to tell you, he's a yes man anyway. He's like, dude, he's not going to be like, well, dad, I don't want that. Or I don't want, no, no, he's not going to speak up. He's nice. You know, again, I feel bad for his kids. Both of them, actually. I talked to his oldest son, too. Um, both of them nice, okay? Um, super laid back, chill. Way the opposite of their dad. Probably, again, sometimes personalities clash with each other, and they are just, I mean, but honestly, they sound just beaten down. Like, no. So, okay, At, no surprise, Caleb's not going to put up a fight. Here we go. Carry on. Trucks. Now, some of you are already want to turn the video off or turn off the space, but that's okay. You'll want to come back to these special lessons once you lose your mind. That truck cost me $55,000, and that's with them taking some off. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he's acting like $55,000, big money. Okay, this is Captain. I've got $750 million. This is what he claims. And all of a sudden, he's going to tell you that 55 k is a sweat. You're sweating 55 k bro? You are a poor ass dude. Don't tell people you're rich, bro. You are not rich. You are not wealthy. You are a fucking nothing from Dundalk, bro. You're living in a dump and you're out here acting like you're some big dog. We're tired of it, bro. Your con is up. Your fraud is up. Get over it, bro. Oh, 55, oh I'm paying $55,000 for that Tacoma. Well, first of all, you paid too much. That's a, I mean, that's a junk truck to begin with. It's not a Ford. What the hell are you doing? Whatever, bro. You want to buy that chink chink stuff? Dude, good. Whatever. But all right, so you're forcing your kid, forcing this truck on him because it's going to drive forever. Whatever your thing is, save some gas, whatnot. Don't be coming out here telling me that, oh, you bought my kids' cars, bro. No, you're just playing shuffleboard because you're a cheap ass. So I do a lot of deals with Jones Junction. I spend about. Yeah, you know what he does with Joe's Junction or whatever the hell it is? 
He flips cars. I told you guys, why has he got two vets at the same time that are both white and whatnot? Because they are the easiest to resell. That's what he does. He flips cars. He's been flipping cars for who knows how long. He can flip up to five or six a year in uh, in Maryland. I think Maryland lets you go up to 10 cars. You can flip in a year. The guy's a car flipper. That's what he does. Buys a car, tries to, you know, does this. He's like, well, I do a lot of inventory with them. <laughs> Bro. You do business with them because you're a car flipping motherfucker. So he claims that he gets a little bit of a discount on this $55,000 Tacoma here. This is short of the story. Let's carry on. $600,000 just in two years buying cars from them. Yeah, car flipping, bro. Yeah, I have a lot of volume. Yeah, and I have a lot of <laughs> a lot of volume I do with them. Car flipping. He ain't telling nobody. Yeah, look, if you guys want to know how ICT makes his money, flipping cars, YouTube, mentorships. There you go. That's that's what you get. And you can get that little dumpy house, little white box that you get in Maryland too. So if you want to really know how to be like ICT, you're wasting your time listening to his garbage, right? Free free trash is still trash, folks. Free poison is still poison. All these people are like, oh, this stuff's free on YouTube. Man, <laughs> Again. Uh, man, you get what you pay for sometimes, and it's poison. Free poison, still poison. Don't forget that. Well, leverage when I go in and say, this is what I'm willing to pay. I know you're trying to make money, but this is what I'm willing to pay. They only came down 3000 off of that price of that Tacoma. Why? Because they had somebody in there ready to buy it, too. But they were giving it to me. It may not be the best business practice to talk about openly, but because I do a lot of business with them, they're like, look, because I know a lot of flipping business with them, you know, he's going to give me that $3,000 discount. He's going to give it to me instead of the other family in there that probably actually needs that Tacoma because it might need to actually, like, I don't know, they're in a yard cutting business or whatever. But, you know, my kid, he ain't cutting yards or nothing. He's going to come over here and, you know, he's going to live at work at Chipotle still. But, uh, you know, he's going to give his other car up. So uh, I'm going to get that truck in front. Yeah, yeah, and I got my flipping business. So he's going to give it to me because, uh, you know, I'm special. If you pay this, we'll sell it to you. But they're out there waiting to, you know, to talk to us about that too. So I scooped it up and bought it. Hate me. So I scooped it up and bought it. Hate me. Dude, this guy is a disgusting pig. He is a, oh my gosh. Oh, bro. You know what? It's funny. You keep posting out these pictures. You know, one of these uh, people actually mentioned the other day said, you ever notice that every one of ICT's pictures looks different in the video? He puts it, it looks different in this one, looks in a different one. I already told people before, what you, don't, what you don't know or you do know, I've told you before, is that the guy has done more plastic surgery on his face. And this guy still looks like a mother ugly af he is ugly af and yet at the same time he's got a new jawline installed new jaw new jaw implant teeth implants the guy got hair implants which you notice he's never gonna let you show you that dude his hair plant implants are bad it's one of those like bad bosley deals um, but he used to be bald as fuck. Now he's got uh, hair implants going on. He's got his nose job thing. He's got his eye lift thing. Gets more Botox with his wife. He goes they go to the same Botox center and all of that. And that guy still looks like a motherfucking huge, ugly ass dog. Holy shit, ICT, bro. It ain't doing you no good, bro. Sick, you sick, bro. And you're ugly on the inside. That's why it's ugly on the outside, bro, in case you needed to know. So all that work you're doing, you're being, oh man, look at me, I'm a big dog. I'm a car flipping mofo, so I get my Tacoma. All right, bro, so you got your Tacoma. Now, mind you, what's he gonna do with that Tacoma, right? Remember, he's gonna give it to his son, supposedly. So he spent 55K on this thing, and then what's he gonna do? Oh, he's gonna give it to his son? Oh, really? You sure about that? Let's, let's listen. But he has that pickup truck sitting on my drive pad. He can't. Sitting on his drive pad, Pay attention. Not not like, oh, so we took it over to him. Oh, we put a bow on it. Oh, he's so excited for Caleb. He's going to get it. No, no. Sitting in daddy's driveway. Okay. Mind you, ICT ain't got room in his driveway because he's got all these cars and he's got a house that doesn't fit his cars in it. This makes no sense. Yeah, let's carry on. I have it yet. Because this is all part of Can't this. have it yet. Yeah. Can't have the car yet, bro. I told him, I said, you have to leave the job to work again. Now, Daddy's gonna tell you what else you also have to do. Daddy says, this is like playing Simon Says, this is Daddy Says. Daddy says do this, Daddy says do that. Daddy says you're getting a Tacoma. Daddy says you gotta get a new job. What? You're 23 years old? Nah, bro. You get to, you get to do what Daddy tells you still. Mm -hmm. Because where he works at, they can mess his car, which is another reason why my oldest son is living with me, he's getting a car. It's already dinged up a little bit. No. Uh, did you hear that? So the car's already dinged up a little bit because the people at his work, he just lives at, works at such a dump, which, you know, still better than going to college or going to a tech school and actually getting a skill out, right? But you're over there cleaning floors, right? Um, it's better. It's better for you. It's, it's for your development. Uh huh. Okay, so his car's gotten wrecked up. And mind you, he says that it got wrecked up. It's a, it's a Corolla. I think it's a Corolla. I don't know. I can't tell what it is. I don't know. It's a cheap car. Gray. I mean, nobody wants to touch the thing right but apparently they want to beat it up i don't know here's the story you tell me i mean it's, it makes no sense carry on 
He doesn't hate Lolo because of the people that he worked with that was jealous of what he drove. And he doesn't drive it. They were jealous of what he drove. It's a Corolla. Think about it. Mm. <laughs> no, really, think about it hard. Very nice car. It's Nissan. It's not that big of a deal. I'm sorry, Nissan. What is that? Nissan Sentra? I don't know. But where he lives and where he works, that is a crime ridden area. Uh, yeah. Same place that you used to live till you did mentorship and you did move out of that area. You still moved into a dump, but now he's living in the same dump area that you were, that you got your father-in-law living in. Crime ridden area, yes. Um, but bro, <laughs> talking about you're worth millions, all this kind of stuff, like, and you couldn't move them out of that. Dude, I don't even want to hear. It. I'm so, <laughs> dude, we're done with you, bro. We're done with your shit, bro. You're done. And it's been meant for him to be inspired to want to leave that and do better. And if he gets this truck and he takes it down there to that job, it'll be ruined. So I told him, I said, you need to get away from that job. If you, now listen here, boy, if you want this car right here, sitting in this driveway that I paid for, that you're going to actually pay for, you just don't know yet. Cause we haven't got to that part of the story yet, but uh, you want this car, you're going to have to get a new job. Cause you know what they're going to do. They're going to mess up that Tacoma. Cause you know, they messed up your Nissan Sentra. All right. So, you know, this Tacoma, I mean, they're really going to want you now, all right? What? You have to get a new job to get this truck. Mmm, this is Bass Ackwards, folks. To get this truck, you're going to need to get a new job. Carry on. Let's, let's, let's hear this story a little bit further. Come up here. In the money you're making, you need to get yourself a townhouse or you know, condo or whatever. A townhouse or condo or whatever with the money you're making. Now, mind you, the money that you're making, but you're talking about a new job. Again, this whole thing starts to really fall apart. This guy is a mental case, but let's just try to follow the story. Yeah, I'm going to try my best because some of it like doesn't make sense when he's like, oh, how much money are you going to? Well, if you got to a new job, how do you know he's going to be getting paid the same thing? You know, is it, is it just, oh, you're going to move from that Chipotle and the other Chipotle, so you know you're going to be getting the same pay? Uh, yeah, probably. And start living up here and get a job up here. So, once he living up here, dude, that ain't that many miles away. All right. There's still, you're still living a dump in Maryland, bro. That's that thing. You have the truck. And then, so you can have the truck. This, then you can have this truck. If you get a new job, this, same pay, same, same pay, but, uh, you can move up here in, uh, uh, a town home or, uh, or, or, or I don't know, or whatever, which is another weird thing. How are you going to figure that out? Because uh, you got granddaddy living with him in this other dump. I don't know how they split up the funds on that one. We, uh, I mean, I know private investigators didn't have that information, but we do have the video of them going in and out of there. And it's just, it's a, I mean, it's a terrible situation. I feel bad for them, but uh, you know, ICT, you should really, you know, pay for real nursing, not force your 23 year old son to be your father-in-law's nurse changing his diapers and shit, getting his depends changed and whatnot. You're, you're forcing your 23 year old son to take care of your elderly grandfather like that, bro. You're sick. You should be ashamed, bro. But I put it in his name. I have not done any payments. In a while. Uh, here we go. Haven't done any payments, but I put the car in his name. Here we go. But, but, don't forget, Caleb's gonna have to pay for this car. <laughs> oh, I gave it to him. No, you didn't give it to him. You picked it out and then you told him to pay for it. You are a cunt. Carry on. Long time, but because he doesn't have any credit, I went to establish credit. So I did a co sign because he doesn't have any credit to you. Oh, oh. It goes from I bought him the car to, oh, all right, co signed on it. Oh. <laughs> you. <sighs> All right, cunt, bro. Bro, I mean, end the story here, bro. You're done. You're done. You're, you're, you're britch. Get that, get out of here, bro. You are broke. You are broke and you're a con artist and a fraud, bro. Thanks for sharing. So he's now got a $900 a month bill. And he's $900 a month for a car, bro. <laughs> this is the worst dad ever. No lie. Okay, listen, and he's supposed to be telling you here, he's going to talk to you guys about the ends and making ends meet in the rest of this video. And his next video is a series called The Ends. Get out of here, bro. This is just the end of ICT is what this is. This is insane. Carry on. That's an end that he now has to meet. So what's he going to do? That $1,000 claim. Wow. <laughs> so and <laughs> he's gonna have to. He's got a one thousand. Now he's got a one thousand dollar bill. Well, what did he have before? So now you're gonna teach it. You're gonna have him trade now to make enough money to pay for that car. That's your idea, and this is how you get good at trading, folks. This is the worst trading advice of all time. 
right? Uh, I literally tell you the opposite of this guy. He's going to tell you, oh, get into debt first so that you force yourself to have to make money. That's what he's basically doing. And, uh, and then you're going to just make money. No, that's not how it works. In fact, I tell you, like, live beneath your means. First thing, if you're going to do a trade for a living, you need to live beneath your means so that you are not stressed about that so you can trade appropriately. This guy is literally telling you the opposite. Look, pick what you want. You want to do it? Go. Go for it. This is your guy who claims he's rich, and here's his advice. Get a car, go into debt, and then pay for it with trading. That's the whole shtick. Right there. That's it. Let's listen in. He trades. Cracks me up. He has to find a way to always be able to net enough money to cover that car note. It keeps him from doing what? Rolling the dice to do big trades, to do one more five-point move. Now, <laughs> some of you might be thinking, it's diabolical. You're it is. Diabolical is stupid is what it is. It's fucking retarded is what it is, you fucking old fart dumbass. Wow, worst advice of all time. Why are you out here talking to anyone? Delete your channel. Delete your fucking account, bro. Evil father. <laughs> but my children, didn't learn this because they watched me. They weren't even inspired. So I have to put them in situations where they have to. So I have to force them. I have to put them in situations because daddy's going to control what you're going to do. I own you. I tell you what to do. This is the this is the mental capacity of a psychopath. I'm going to control everything you do. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to force you what to do. Blah, blah, blah. This is not good parenting. This is not good advice giving. This is stupid. This is insane. Otherwise, they're going to be left to doing these types of jobs the rest of their life because I'm not going to just lay money in their lap. I'm not doing that. Bro, you... I there's a scenario where you, you know pull yourself up from your own bootstraps but uh you have to have boots sometimes you got to give your kid boots so they can pull up their own bootstraps you're not even giving your kids boots bro what you're doing is you're putting weights in their boots so they'll sink to the bottom you are a fucking piece of shit father fuck off so he's in a situation now that he has to make that work and if he doesn't he messes up my credit which let's be honest and it messes up his credit, folks. This is what poor people say. A rich person does not worry about or talk about their credit. Uh, you know, at my age, I've got uh, 820 credit score, whatever. This is what more actual uh, money, people with money have. You don't think about your credit score, bro. You're still thinking about your credit score or whatever. Uh, and the fact that you wouldn't just pay outright cash for that, bro, you're broke. Get out of here, bro. I wouldn't let that happen, but it would if the payments didn't be, you know, be kept up and he's building his own credit. So he has a vested interest in seeing that it's done right. So it's going to mess up his credit because he's co-signed and his son has to pay for the bill, but he's telling you that he paid for his... Listen, if you're still believing this stuff, all you little uh, minions down in the comments are like, ah, ah, you guys are dumb. Like, and ICT said it. Actually, it was hilarious uh, when he was talking in private to Adam Webb and he literally said that, uh, yeah, all these followers of mine are mindless fucks. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, he's right though. We agree on that. His insurance only one of them. I don't think maybe 40 bucks a month. I think it was. So after the 900, whatever, it went up 40. He doesn't say how much, but listen, you're now talking about over a thousand dollars. Yeah. You have put your son into a debted state. And so now that's going to make him a great trader, right? ICT. <laughs> Woo. I mean, I could not have come up with that plan, bro. I mean, <laughs> the worst advice of all time. I mean, I don't think you can get worse, bro. Something less than 50 bucks. It's called that. So he went from not having a hard note to now having basically a thousand dollars a month. And that's better. Folks, are you on crack? I mean, uh, I don't even know what to say, bro. That's not counting gas. Not counting gas, even though we goes. I mean, the budgeting for this rich guy who, dude, I mean, I don't even think about this stuff. Like, you don't have to when you actually have money. This is what I mean. Like, my whole point of this, I don't care if he's got bad advice. I don't care if he's a bad dad. I don't care if he's a bad trader. I really don't. But don't come out here pretending that you are. This is our problem. Okay. Our problem is with the frauds in this industry. You are a liar. You are a con man. You're a bad dad. <laughs> Carry on. Sure, if I can spend a little bit more in fuel, but if he works close to where I live and he works close to his home, which is not 
close to where I live and uh, close to his home. Like, again, all this stutter, stutter, forgetting what he's, uh, 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 uh well, that's weird. Uh, close to you and close to him. Uh, 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 again, your whole story is starting to fall apart, bro. You know, all of a sudden, like these little truth pills start to pop out of you because you ain't being able to, you know, pause the video uh, while you, uh, you know, rearrange your charts here real quick. So, uh, you know, one take, one shot, one kill. <laughs> bro, you're falling apart, bro. I determined can't keep the story straight. What we're going to you know, decide on. I don't know if a condo is the right thing for him. And I don't know if he's going to choose a townhouse or a single family. Okay, so he's thought through all this stuff. Or he's going to choose. He could choose. Uh, 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 well, I just thought through getting in this car. I mean, I just saw this truck, you know, next to the other truck in the parking lot. I was like, oh, I'm going to get this truck. Yeah, doesn't think through the whole thing. But all of a sudden, he's going to put his son. He's going to tell him to move. He's going to tell him to get a new job. But uh, I don't know where he's going to move. Uh, or he's not, not talking about how much those places are going to cost, especially since his grandfather, I'm sure, was splitting the place with him before. I mean, this is just absolutely insane. This whole thing falls apart and i don't see anybody going out there and giving him rest has about nothing on this podcast thing so when i heard it i was just like well yeah i just don't think they're they're smart enough to figure out what's happening they're like people just listen to him like oh, he's out in his truck uh, saying stuff again oh i just love listening to his voice it's just so inspiring i'm gonna blow my accounts next week can't wait but his trading has to meet those needs because daddy's not paying for it wait i thought you said you were buying him a car i thought you said you were getting him a car Daddy's, but now you're saying daddy's not paying for it. Uh, <laughs> bro, you're, you're a turd, bro. You're a giant fucking turd. So I'm forcing him out of the nest into the real world. So you had a taste of what it's like to make money. You had a taste of seeing it in your account. But now what do you do with it? You have to be structured about what it is you're doing with it. So it helps him and anybody else that would apply this because it did it for me as well. I didn't have a car note that was $1,000. I had a bill to myself. My first bill every month was, $1,000 has to go into my savings account at Nation's Bank. That's where I was doing business. So all of my focus was making money to guarantee that I had that $1,000 a month to pay me first. Then I had a car payment. Then I had insurance. Then I had gym memberships and, and, and you know, whatever things I was doing that were extra curricular, which at the beginning of my trading wasn't much. Anytime I'd go out to eat with my friends, that, that kick around money, that pocket change, that would be after I paid my bills. And the first bill I paid myself was the $1,000 a month. So I lived on that principle that I paid myself first and everything else, whatever I had left, I lived on that. So I'm forcing my son into that. And I'm telling you as my students to do that same thing. So you might be laughing. So I'm telling you as my students, y'all need to do this same thing. Listen, this is the level of advice that ICT gives you. If you wanted to know whether or not you're wasting your time with ICT, I'm telling that you are. All this stuff where he's just saying, well, I'm giving it away for free. Da, da, da. First of all, free poison is still poison. All that stuff is going to waste your time. He is trying to get you into a scenario where you listen in, listen in, listen in, listen in. There is a time sunk theory. You feel like you've sunk so much time to something you cannot pull away. This is his whole con and long game on this whole thing. You need to quit. If you are listening in to ICT, you are wasting your time and your money and these are two of the most precious things you have in life now it's not all about money but it's about what money can do for you to take care of your friend family you can take care of you and your household you can take care of others when you get an abundance of it which is the whole point and what i'm trying to teach you guys to do is become abundantly blessed so that you can bless others you cannot bless others without being blessed you got me all right there's more to come on this but i'm gonna leave this right here because this thing is just a sinking ship there's more to come next video is going to be even more powerful you guys are going to see the places that these kids live ict lives in a dump his kid here lives with his elderly grandfather taking care of him doing his hospice care nursing center bullshit for his um, elderly father poor guy he needs some help he needs a real nurse needs real people taking care of him instead he's got this 23 year old kid who you know can barely can't apparently can't you know balance a checkbook and like all this stuff is like all oh, real world stuff because all of a sudden you have a bill to pay and then his other son eldest son lives in a trailer park in a trailer i talked to him last week we'll reveal some more in the next one i'm out